12 tone. Do you ever get bored with traditional harmony? Do you ever feel like everything has already been done and you're not quite sure how you would top a Mahler symphony or a Strauss opera? I imagine this is what Schoenberg was thinking when he was coming up with his 12 tone system. Most music that people enjoy is based on the system of tonality. Put simply, tonality is the arrangement of musical notes into keys and hierarchies. Within these keys, each note and chord has a function, and the goal of tonality is to create tension and release through this harmonic structure. In other words, some notes and chords are more important than others, and there is always a note that serves as the tonic, or the home note. This is where the music feels most at rest. Schoenberg's 12-tone system was a constraint that he placed upon himself that would allow him to break free of the traditional routes of harmony and tonality and explore new ideas of emancipated dissonance, or dissonance and consonance for its own sake and not to serve the goals of tonality. At the end of the video, we're going to put Schoenberg's method to the test, and I will compose a piece using his 12-tone method. What is 12-tone? 12 12-tone, 12 put simply, is a system that attempts to completely avoid the thought of any one note being more important than the other. This is accomplished by creating a system that does not allow you to repeat any one note again before all 12 of the chromatic pitches have been played. Every note in the chromatic scale has to happen before any note can be played twice, which heavily muddies the ear's sense of what the tonic or the home note is. In 12-tone music, each of the pitches are assigned a number. In this case, we'll say that C equals zero. Any note could be assigned zero as long as the relationships to the other notes are correct. Every other note is assigned a number based on the number of half steps it is away from C. D flat would be one, D would be two, etc. So a chromatic scale starting on C would look like this. In this system, enharmonicism doesn't make a difference. G sharp is nine, whether it's written G sharp or A flat. Also, it's important to note that 12 tone rows are mod 12, which means that no number goes beyond 11. When it gets to 12, it just goes back to zero. A C will equal zero regardless if it's C1 or C6. In order to compose a 12 tone composition, we must first derive a tone row. A tone row is just a string of these 12 pitches in a unique order with the caveat being that each pitch must be used at least once and none of them can be repeated. So the row that we'll use is this. So for our composition, we have to use all of these notes in that order before repeating any notes. In general, the rhythms and note durations of the notes are irrelevant. There are more extreme versions of this theory where rhythms and durations of the notes are important, but we'll leave that alone for now. There is one small exception that I forgot to mention. So a note may be repeated as many times as you like, as long as you don't go to a different note and then come back. So for example, this would be okay, but this wouldn't be. You can't reuse that A until all of the other notes have been played through. What happens when you want to use notes in different orders? It would get boring pretty quick if you just had to use that one row in that order over and over again. Well, there are operations that you can put the row through to help create some more entry. The first operation is known as transposition. We can transpose the row to a new pitch level, so all of the notes will change, but the intervals between the notes will stay the same. For example, our row... If transposed up by one half step would become... We can also call this version of our row T1, or transposition 1, with the original row being named T0. We can transpose the row by any interval that we'd like. We could retrograde the row, which simply means to play it backwards. So our T0 will become... and we can label this R0. The retrograde can also be combined with our transposition, like so. Remember our T1 row was... And if we want to retrograde that row, we would get... This row would be labeled R1. We can invert the row, which means to flip the row over the axis of 0 and 6. Here's a graphic of this. You know you are doing this right if both numbers add up to 12, with the exception of 0. 0 equals 0, 1 equals 11, 2 equals 10, 3 equals 9, 4 equals 8, 5 equals 7, and 6 equals 6, and so on and so forth. So our row goes from this... to this. This will be labeled I0, or inversion zero. This can also be transposed up and down as many half steps as you would like. 
the inversion can also be retrograded and transposed, which opens up even more possibilities. The retrograde inversion, RI0, would look like this. The matrix, instead of trying to escape it, in this music, we embrace the matrix. It can be a godsend for figuring out all the possibilities of the tone row. The matrix is a way of showing every possible operation of the row in all of its forms. This way shows us the transpositions, this way shows us the retrograde transpositions, this way shows the inversions, and this way shows the retrograde inversions. So let's use some of this info and write a short 12 tone piece. My piece will be two voices and the voices will be doing this. Voice one will play a theme of T0 and voice two will rest. And then voice two will take over T0 and voice one will play I4 and will continue in a canonic structure. I'll treat each row as a theme. So when T0 is played in the first voice, it will be repeated identically in the second voice. And that's mostly what you get. Like I said, I am no composer. I just do some basic compositional tricks along with the 12-tone system, and that's what came out. Try composing on your own row in Matrix and see what you get out. One of you could be the next Berg or Stravinsky. Thanks for watching. If you found this interesting or you learned something, please consider leaving a like and subscribe.